other salami, Tommy. Give it the gravy, Davy. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Hey guys, it's Jody here from Honeysuckle Hill Bistro, and I have Mitch from Myers Market with me, and um, he's gonna be cooking some plank steak with us today. But so, Mitch, okay, tell me about Myers Market. Um, so we've been uh, in business for just over six years. Okay. Um, we're a kind of a hands-on butcher shop, uh, deli, and um, catering. You know, catering. Yeah. yeah, we do a lot of uh, local Indiana-made products as well. Yeah. Then, oh, I don't think I mentioned that Mitch is the owner. So, and you're a young owner, so you became owner of your own business before you were thirty. Mm -hmm. So, um, how's what's that been like? Um, way more than what I expected. Um, good and bad yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's got its days yeah yeah as a business owner it's always fun to see people from outside your local community yeah um coming just specifically to see you you yeah. know and we had talked about it helping the local kind of commerce yeah um in a way full disclosure we buy most of our meat from from Mitch at Myers and um, so I'm there at least once a week whenever we're open sometimes if I don't do very good with my grocery list I well gosh there <laughs> towards the end of 2019 serving season I think I was there like three times a week or something it was crazy but um, you guys never show if you're ever having a bad day you know you're always it's it's always an upbeat happy place you know yeah yeah, I think in because we're a close knit family, we kind of keep each other sane, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. some families aren't that same way, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> we we pick up on each other's downs and and trying to change yeah, it. Yeah, so it's mostly family mm -hmm. that works with you. How is it to work with with family? Um, it's. It's been fine. I haven't had any issues. Yeah. Um, I was asked one time about that, um, and they said, you know, you're never supposed to hire anybody you can't fire. And they were kind of laughing at me because I basically hired all family. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but we've not had any any issues that we can't resolve amongst right. ourselves. Right, right. So, because, so, I mean, our girls and Andy are huge parts of our business. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still have a lot of staff that's not family, but it's hard for me to imagine being able to do the bistro and the bistro be the bistro without the family. Do you yeah. feel the same way oh, about yeah, the Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. If it weren't for for all of them, it wouldn't be yeah. what it is today. Um, there was so much experience beforehand in retail um, that's helped all along the way and then you know the the willingness to want to help and see me succeed and the rest yeah. of the family succeed that that they everybody's pitched in yeah that's awesome yeah because how much so with the catering gig and with the market gig mm -hmm. how many how many staff do you actually have um so like full peak um catering and everything we're probably really only at about 15. Okay. We do a lot of we do a lot of trade over. Um, the market sends half or so of its employees yeah. to catering when when need be. So, yeah. Um, Have you always felt like you were an entrepreneur? Um, I would say no, but I think my family would probably say yes. Okay. Um, from when I was just a kid, I would uh, take the fruits and veggies out of my mom's fridge and set up a stand out oh, in front of the house ah, I love that. <laughs> and sell her her stuff ah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so i think yeah i probably have um always had a bit of that i love that that's so cool <laughs> not for your mom yeah, it's not cool right. for your mom and the rest of the family but cool for you so why why the meat market um it was really it was a dream um, of something that I had seen in college um, of the, the small family run butcher shop that kind of community that it, it forms um, and after you know quite a while of 
debating it and stuff. Uh, my former employer and my family all kind of kept pushing me and to, yeah. to try something yeah. new. So That's a gift in and of itself, mm -hmm. you know, encouraging you to, to live your dream. Right, you know? yeah. So, okay, I ask everybody this question. So what do you feel like is your creative outlet? Because I'm, I'm a firm believer everybody has a creative outlet. Um, I don't know. I've, I've always liked hands-on stuff um, and doing kind of arts type stuff. Um, but I would say now just because of, of what I do, food is definitely mm -hmm. my creative outlet. Um, trying to make up new recipes, mm -hmm. R&D, that kind of stuff, um, adding bacon to something different. <laughs> ah. Can you imagine doing anything else? Even if you've got a bad day at the market, I mean, can you imagine doing anything else that you would love anymore? Right. No, and I, I think of that sometimes. I'm like, where would I be if I, if I wasn't here, if I had anything else? And there's nothing that I'm as passionate about as what I am yeah. with the market. So. Yeah. And I feel like that the market, I mean, I don't live in Putnam County or Greencastle, but I feel like whenever I go in that you have made the market a staple in the community. And that's, that's no small thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing and something that you should really be proud of. Even though I know you're a humble guy and you wouldn't <laughs> get a big head or anything, but that's an awesome thing. And for me personally, I'm going to say this on this will go on YouTube, <laughs> but um, you have helped me a lot with our business because I mean, I didn't know what in the heck I was doing whenever we started and whenever we were six months in, whenever I met you mm -hmm. and started buying from you, and um, I know that you have upped my game. You're one of those people that. You know, in life, you have those people that um, every time you're around them, they inspire you, and you are one of those people for Thank me. You. Thank you. So you probably didn't know that, no. that you were that to a 50-year-old <laughs> woman. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's get rid of all the mushiness here coming out of my mouth, and let's make some flank steak. Yeah. Okay, we're in the kitchen with Mitch, and so Mitch... Show us what it is that we're doing with this flank steak, because I have right. never even done anything with the flank steak before. All right. We so, just got, it's about a pound and a half uh, flank steak. Okay. Um, we're just going to start by seasoning it. We just got a little happy salt here. Okay. So, flank steak, what part of the beef? So, it comes um, basically the bottom side of the hind quarter. Okay. So how do you uh, normally grill this? Do you bake it? How do you um, grilling is the preferred method. Okay. So, um, but they're, just because of the way the texture of the, the meat is, they're best for marinating and then grilling okay. to help break down some of that protein that's there. Okay. Protein sounds very fancy. <laughs> Okay, so what do we have? We got a... So we start out with about a half a cup of soy sauce. Okay, half cup soy sauce. And then a teaspoon of ground ginger. Okay. And we're gonna do a tablespoon of sorghum, or you can use molasses in its place. So could you use honey? Um, I don't know why not. Okay, all right. Just had to get that in there, all right. And then we're going to put in another half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Into our marinade. All right. Now you sell the happy salt. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And you sell the sorghum. Yep. Okay. What is sorghum actually? I don't know. Sorghum it comes from the stock of a uh, sorghum plant. Okay. It's a process, I think, similar to molasses and that it's a byproduct. Okay. So is it like grown around here? Uh, yeah, they do grow some around here. Oh, you don't see it very okay. often. Okay. And then just 
stick the plank in the bag. Okay. And so that makes what about two cups all together of marinade? Yeah, just probably just over a cup and then Okay. Oh yeah, I guess this is a two cup thing, it's only half full. Sorry, I was thinking it was a four cup. All right. So how long are we gonna put that? Two hours to overnight, two hours would be ideal. I mean, we've done it with less time than that, but. Okay, all right. So we're ready to stick this in the refrigerator. So Mitch, this has been marinating mm -hmm. for a good several hours. Yep. Um, so now what are we gonna do? And it's just ready to throw on the grill. Okay, so this is a handy dandy industrial stove. I've got it on 350. So if somebody has like an electric griddle in their house that they're using, what temperature would you say? Uh, 350 is usually pretty safe. Okay. And then this is, with it being a steak, you can grill it to what you like your doneness to be. Okay. Um, one of the nice things about plank steak is it's thin on the edges, so you can serve a larger group that likes different wellnesses. Oh, okay. Um, you'd be more medium rare in the center and more well done on the on the edges. So. Okay. So, what temperature are you usually looking at? So, for for your liking. Um, done this wise. Mm -hmm. I I prefer like a medium rare, so I'll do anything in that one forty to one fifty range. Okay. So, I'm gonna put you totally on the spot here. What? What are the temperatures that you're looking at for like a rare, medium rare, all that kind of stuff? Um, with rest times, what I typically am looking at is that 130 to 135 for rare, um, 140 to 145 for medium rare, um, 150 for medium, 155 for medium well, and then 160 to 65 for anything that's shoe leather. Okay. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> that looks nice. So, would you normally put like a weight on this? No. Okay. No, just uh, grill just like that. Okay. All right. I'm gonna see. Okay. You're gonna slice this. So we always slice because the grain of, of the flank stick runs long wise. A slice against the grain. Okay. So, um, what would you serve with this, Mitch? Um, we typically do rice with it, okay. um, just because of the flavors of it. Um, works yeah, with well with, with kind of an okay. Asian, yeah, mm -hmm. style. So any type of rice or uh, like a thick noodle, or something like that. So, you can see there as we got into the the center, we get a little more rare. Yeah. Okay. So, veggie wise, I mean, do you do, I mean, okay, you're a meat market. Do you even do veggies? If it were up to me, no. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm definitely meat and potatoes, but I'm told that I have to have, you know, rounded meals. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like more meat than what. It does whenever it's mm -hmm. just in one piece. Yeah, and you you get a hundred percent of what you oh, what true. you're cooking. Okay. So there's there's no bone loss or anything like that. So there definitely is a lot of meat compared to what the, what it looks like. Okay. So um, can I just try yeah. a bite? Okay. So um, I'm gonna be barbaric here and just use my my hand. That's real good. And it's way more tender than what I thought mm -hmm. it might be. Good job, Mitch. <laughs> Thank you. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. So people can find this um, recipe, right, that you're going to share mm -hmm. on the underneath in the comments section under this video. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you follow Myers Market on Facebook. Are you, you guys are on the Instagram mm -hmm. too? Yep. They do all kinds of fun things. So um, you're going to want to stay abreast of what they're doing. And you can order some products, not meat products, but um, right. the dry Seasonings products and, and yes, stuff yep. like that. 
um, from their website, which is what? MyersMarketLLC.com. Okay, all right. So make sure you do that. Make sure you subscribe to our channel because that helps a lot. And follow us on Facebook. Um, we do have Instagram. I'm not very good with that though. And sign up for our emails at HoneysuckleHillBee.com. So thanks much for coming yep. and doing this. This is awesome. This is great. You can have some too. Okay. <laughs> That is really good. All right, I'm gonna have these two.